Hey everyone, I hope you're doing well. Today I'm really excited to talk about my favorite class to play in Darktide, the Psyker. With the most recent patch, we finally got some much needed love for the Psyker. Weapons finally got a nice balance pass and a bunch of brand new abilities have been given to us. With that said, one new ability that I love using is the Assail ability. With this new ability, we can throw homing shards out at our enemies, making horde clearing incredibly easy. This ability tracks wherever your reticle is placed, so if you were to put it over where an incoming horde of enemies are pushing, it'll seek out multiple targets within that area, and just like Brain Rupture, you can send out a single shard in that direction and always hit that target. This is incredibly useful if you need to pick off a single specialist target like a sniper or a gunner that's disrupting your team's progression. The build that I've created for my Psyker is a multi-use all-rounder. It has supportive capabilities but really shines when you encounter massive waves of horde enemies. With this setup, you can face pretty much anything thrown at you, whether it's multiple crushers or an overwhelming amount of specials. And just like with my previous build video, I'm going to go over the weapons first. The weapon that I like to use as my melee weapon is the Obscurus Mark II Blaze Force Sword. I opted in setting my perks towards doing more damage to Flak and Carapace Armored enemies. This is great for charging up your weapon special, which is a warp charge, then releasing that attack on those specific enemy types. Its blessings are where it shines most though. With Deflector, as we block, we create a small shield around the front side of our character that blocks melee and ranged attacks. You want to try to go for a higher tier so you can have a higher block cost reduction. This blessing is mostly used to move freely around the area without having to worry about taking massive amounts of damage from static gunners and other threats. Once you get close enough to the target, you can push them with your warp shield and then attack with your follow-up. The other blessing that I found works well with this was Slaughterer. It could stack up to 5 times and grants you power for 4.5 seconds upon killing any enemy. Again though, you really want a higher tier blessing here for maximum damage. Additionally, this is also a weapon where you want to pay attention to the stats, one of which is quite important. Warp Resistance is a stat that can be utilized very effectively depending on the amount that your weapon has. For instance, the higher the resistance stat, the less peril that you'll build up. So anything above 60% should be what you're looking for. The next weapon is where this class shines most. The Equinox Mark IV Void Strike 4 Staff got a huge buff with this recent patch. All direct hits got a 70% increased power boost, and it also received an increase in cleave, allowing it to pass through droves of enemies swarmed in a straight line. It also has an increased explosive attack and impact, as well as a faster charge rate whenever you're using its secondary function. This has been my favorite staff because of its wide variety of uses. The projectile has so many different uses depending on different scenarios. You can throw it through multiple common enemies, you can take out snipers from a long range, and you can even stagger monstrosities with it. The stats that you want to look out for though are quell speed, damage radius, and warp resistance. Obviously damage and charge rate above 60% is a good pick too though, but those other three make this weapon really strong. I tend to swap to the staff after using my abilities because of how quickly I can release my peril. I like to use this weapon for my bigger enemies so I went with unyielding for boss damage and maniacs to help assist my team whenever I hear mutants running by us. The blessings that I have for this though are personal choice, however Warp Flurry is a great blessing. It reduces the charge time that you'll need to build up your projectile, allowing you to shoot more frequently, and this can stack up to 3 times. The other blessing that I like to use since Cleave got a buff is Surge. Critical shots now send out 2 projectiles. This comes in handy whenever you're going for boss targets and aiming for their weak spots. There's a lot of different blessings that you can go with though if Surge doesn't fit your playstyle. For instance, Transfer Peril is great if you want to stay at a good peril rate while using this weapon, or even Terrifying Barrage, which suppresses enemies within a set range upon killing an enemy in close range. I recommend that you find your weakness and set out to apply what you find more useful. I personally like using these since I usually don't let my peril get the best of me. As for my curios, I like to lean towards a higher toughness since my abilities will be assisting with the recharge, but I also have the 20% max health for a little bit of wiggle room. As for my perks, I like having my combat ability regenerate a little bit faster, but having resistance is always nice too. Again, this is always back down to personal preference. Since I play this class a little bit more as a backline support, I lean more towards having resistances with corruption over specialists or disablers. This is of course more reliant on your personal playstyle. If you find yourself more active in the front line, maybe take Flamer or Gunner Resistance as they will most likely be more of a hindrance to you. So just like before, here's the current talent tree I have for this build. I'm going to briefly explain what talents I decided to invest in, as well as talk about how they enhance this build along with the weapons. My main ability that I use with this build is called Venting Shriek. This works exactly how the original feat was for the Psyker. Since we have a lot of weapons and ways to gain peril, I wanted to help mitigate as much peril as I could, especially if needed during horde encounters. This works incredibly well with the modifier Becalming Eruption. Now, anytime that I use my main ability on a horde, I also decrease my peril generation by 1% per enemy hit. This also stacks up to 25 times and lasts for 5 seconds. 
This is also why I opted to set my Curios to combat ability since I want to be able to have this ready whenever I may need it. The newest Blitz ability, Assail, has been one of my favorites to play around with. The only weakness it has is whenever Carapace armored enemies are present, otherwise it can clear rooms of enemies on its own. Within that same branch, I chose to go with Ethereal Shards which helps your shards pass through multiple targets, allowing you to save yourself from using additional shards and increasing your peril. The other ability I chose was Quick Shards. This enhances the recharge rate of your shards by 30%, meaning within a few seconds you could have another shard readily available. Seer's Presence is my choice for the aura, giving myself and my teammates a 10% cooldown reduction on abilities whenever they're in coherency. For my Keystone ability, Empowered Psionics gives my kills a 7.5% chance to empower my next use of a sale, meaning it will be 100% peril cost reduction, base damage will be increased to 150, and it won't even consume a charge. With the modifiers that I went with, Charged Up allows me to hold 3 stacks of Empowered Psionics, and Overpowering Souls which guarantees at least 1 stack of Empowered Psionics off of an elite kill. Basically, anytime you see an Ogryn, take out your staff, and once they die, you should see a free stack in your hotbar. Psychic Leeching is the last keystone modifier that I chose because anytime I throw a shard with a stack of Empowered Psionics, it replenishes 15% toughness to myself and my allies, making sure everyone is covered whenever they're facing an overwhelming horde. As for my passives, I went with a lot of choices that assist with my peril management, damage output, and overall utilization of my class's abilities. With Empathic Evasion, a critical hit gives you a free dodge against any ranged attacks for one second. This is useful whenever you enter a room with multiple gunners and you send out a few shards. Those that crit will protect you while you keep your eyes out for more enemies. Kinetic Deflection is very useful with our Blaze Sword. Blocking an attack whenever we're below critical peril will not use up any of our stamina. Instead, it builds up our peril. This keeps up our stamina to assist down teammates or even allows us to get out of a bad situation. One thing to note though is that you can gain a lot of peril if you're not paying attention, because 25% of the blocked attack is fixed to your stamina cost. Metal helps you replenish 5% toughness and also grants you 5% increased move speed for 4 seconds and stacks 3 times. This passive is a huge buff to my build because it lets me play more aggressively knowing I'm actively replenishing my toughness with each crit. The passive Mind in Motion is really useful as you'll be moving at a normal rate whenever you're quelling your peril. One with the warp is very useful because of the passive kinetic deflection. Depending on the amount of peril you gained, we gain a toughness damage reduction of around 10 to 33%. The passive perfect timing grants us 3% warp damage for 10 seconds upon a critical hit. It also stacks 5 times. Perilous Combustion is probably my favorite passive because it allows your full arsenal to shine. Basically, anytime you kill an elite or a specialist, you apply 4 stacks of soul blaze around that enemy, causing damage over time to surrounding enemies. This is the perfect passive for whenever you enter a room and see a group of enemies all clumped together next to a special enemy. It will kill just about everyone around them, making it extremely easy for your team to maneuver around. Puppet Master is another passive that boosts the coherency aura by increasing the radius by 50%. Soul Stealer replenishes 15% toughness on your warp attacks, making our Blaze Sword even more viable to use. The passive True Aim gives us a guaranteed critical whenever we land 5 weak spot hits. This is more noticeable whenever you're fighting an elite or a monstrosity. And lastly, Warp Rider, which gives you 20% more damage from all sources based solely on your current peril. If you stay around 50-70% to 70 peril, you can do a lot of damage. If your peril is reaching to about 100%, just remember to use your Shriek before you combust. My operative modifiers all fit nicely within this build, boosting my crit chance, health, movement speed, lower peril generation, toughness, and damage reduction, while also giving my teammates a 10% toughness replenishment with incoherency. This has been one of the stronger team-oriented builds that I've made that fits quite well with having a nice balance between being aggressive and reserved. But, like I said in my last video, this is all my own preference and how I enjoy playing my Psyker. And just like last time, I have another Damnation match playing in the background for those of you that want to see how effective this build can be when utilized correctly. Anyways, I'm going to go start working on my Zealot build now, so don't forget to subscribe to see that one. My name is Zen, and I hope to see you again real soon. Enjoy.
Executing. Diamantes! Nasty came through here. Terminating. An adroit domination. A gratifying eruption. Engaging multiple targets. Precision fire on the way. Neutralization commenced. Executing. Isolating targets. Inquisitions above it. I'd ask that you still respect the Lex Atoma. We are even Ogrin. Ha! It's a hierarchy, see? Important and get the Darbatine. Your data interrogators can override the security
is marked for death. Not trust every enforcer. I've learned that lesson painfully. You have the Bastille. You, you are always looking out for your associates. I find that very inspiring. Is no problem. You are very small and delicate. I am my team. And what can we do for you in return? Protocols engaged. Fury does not have big to make. That's why I don't do all the wrongs in person unless I am dead. That's quite sufficient. Say that. Taste the blood. It is certainly memorable, associate. Well, each to their own, I suppose. One may take pleasure in a clean kill. But there should be no satisfaction found in suffering. They should have stayed with me. Targets marked. Executing. Pastille!
Engaging multiple targets. Bad doggy. I want everyone together before I update the critical. Get some fire back. Visual on a sniper. Stop shooting me, veteran. Targets identified. The new It's marked for death. This one's for Kaiser. Neutralization. Neutralization commenced. Worthy of a hot shot in Warsaw.